I'm going to go over this guy's game. It's a random game I found from New Player Lobby in Boobly. It's Centurion. He ended up losing, but he's rated 13, uh, 50. I can't do math. 13.59 on Boobly before he lost this game. Um, it's kind of funny because it's the first game I grabbed that was a Hun War, and I was actually shocked by how well he played. His Dark Age was great. In Feudal, he idled his TC. I think I bet I could go through the actual Veil count to figure out exactly how much, but that was kind of a big mistake. Um, but tactically, I want to go through his big mistakes since his eco is like far above uh, his level of play. I'm 1691 Voopy right now, um, but I think the advice goes to every level, and I'll just jump into it right now. Um, so the first thing you want to do, obviously, is send like your Vils the opposite side of your sheep, and like strategically to find the sheep as soon as possible. Did I say send the Vils the opposite side of your scout or sheep? Anyway, you want to maximize area scouted to get your sheep as soon as possible, because that's a big deal. If they're a little late, the sheep under your TC, you can put 7 on sheep until it evens out and do it that way. Um, the next thing you want to do is find your wood line and where you want to put your lumber camp. Uh, this one's easy because it's Green Arabia, so everything's close by and nice and tight to his TC. But if you have a bad map and the first wood line you scout is really far away and you want to hold out to maybe find a better wood line, or if it's like by a pond and it's just like so awful and you want to wait, uh, you can just go on a straggler until you hopefully find a better wood line or figure out what you want to do and have to maybe walk too far or take a bad wood line or whatever. Um, I'm going to stay away from the Dark Age stuff as far as like, oh, uh, you want to hit the next sheep when the the sheep's running low and stuff like that and he ended up doing a really good job of it it's actually shocked how well he got he microed his wood bills and his uh berry bills and stuff because he at least spot checked it at, at least once and it's more than i even see at like the 15x level in uh 16x boobly if i didn't know any better from his rating like i wouldn't know he was rated this um because as far as the dark age efficiency efficiency goes it's way above like his level like, he, I, I would say it'd be like 1550 Voobly or 1650, and if someone told me that, I wouldn't have any, you know, argument against it. I know it is also from one game, so it's more about, like, consistency too, but I, it, it's really good for his level still. Um, one thing that pretty much I had to be spoon-fed towards to me from Carlos Ferdinand, um, he said that even if you scout all your stuff, uh, it's nice to do a a little ring around your base kind of like what blue's doing right now because you want to plan out how the game's going to progress and where you want to wall and stuff like that so it's just something to keep in mind i think that's really important too for even doing uh uh if, if you're going to do the same strategy anyways like let's say you're going to make seven scouts click bloodlines and do your same like archer castle age click no matter what uh which is what i used to do which is not really the best thing um it's still good to plan out where you want to put your units and where on your, on your base is vulnerable and stuff like that. And so when you go scout the other guy, you'll see all the best players and even the 2Ks and stuff like that. Um, they'll scout like a double ring around the other guy's base. Because, again, even if you do the same thing and you make the exact same amount of scouts and archers and whatever, uh, you want to see exactly how you want to use them, uh, what spots on his base are vulnerable, Maybe you want to switch your strategy and do something smarter, like make more archers, because his base is, uh, is more vulnerable to archers, and it's going to have a hard time defending two wood lines or something like that, or his base is really open and you want to make more scouts. And that's kind of where the strategy stuff comes into play. Because believe me, I lost a ton of games where I had a way better Dark Age and Feudal Age on paper for Eco, but uh, screwed up the, the, the other stuff, which is more fun. Tactical stuff's way more fun. Uh, so his board losers are really good. Your second board for 22 pop scouts needs to be done under the TC at the 6 minute mark if you want to click up in time. And not have to put like extra bills to bore. Um, the farm, like this guy should have just dropped it on the sell side of the TC. 
I know there's that picture for like perfect like efficiency farms for eight farms around the TC, but it really doesn't matter. Saves you a few, a few food from the worst farm to the best farm placement over the course of eight minutes, eight game minutes. So it's uh, it's better just to minimize walking time with the bills and watching your scout and uh, stuff like that. Uh, what else did I want to say? Oh, if you can drop your boar on like where he did his two boars, such good placement under the TC because you can force drop your bills and he did it on his first boar. He had to force drop a couple times, but they can all force drop all at once without some having to walk and get all messed up. It's just nice and clean. Uh, he's making a second wood line. He idled his bills just like for a second after the boar, but it's like whatever. You'll see like people like doubt do it sometimes and stuff like that. It's it's really minor. This is good though. He's clicking loom, so you can tell he's going to click up in a timely manner. Fortunately, he loses his scout here. What he wants to do is stutter it, like maybe time it the arrow fire so he can just hightail it out of there. Um, and you can see at a higher level too, it's even my level. It sucks to even take and like just the minimum damage because then his scout will r run down your scout and all you get give up map control that way. So even taking a hit from a bill, it's not worth it to harass it th at that time. Um, I think he's a little late sending these bills to wood. I didn't catch that the first time. That stuff's going to be whatever. Uh, the main things that I'm going to be focusing on, because like I said, I had better egos uh, than my opponents, and I've lost the game before because I didn't understand the tactical stuff, is keeping your scout alive. This is good barrack placement. I was surprised when I watched this the first time. He's even microing these woodvilles here. It's uh, it maybe did more harm than good. Maybe should have just pulled one vill. That's still good though. He's focusing on it. He sees the deer. He wants to grab those for later. You can tell he's experienced because he knows he has time to do that stuff right now. But you want to see if he's forwarding you right now with the scout. You want to see if he's dropping a stable or if he's going range, uh, doing something sneaky like that. You want to see if he's on stone, you know, all that random stuff. You want to see what he's doing. The other thing you can do is, like, do forward spears with scout pressure. Um, and you wouldn't know to do that without scouting, like, around his base and stuff. Like, maybe he has forward berries or something that you just kind of want to delay. And you want to just brute force map control in a certain area with the spear and scouts just to drop a tower, maybe. Uh, which, actually, like, I'm cheating because I've already seen the wreck. But uh, would have been a good idea. Instead of blind doing the build. Uh, good spot for a stable. One thing I didn't used to do is put his buildings far, put my buildings far enough from the gold. So they would have been like two tiles closer maybe or one tile closer. And you have to think about archers with fletching. Like, like when they get fletching, they could just walk up to the building and still hit your gold bills. Which is never fun. He's doing a good job keeping his base safe. Like I said, a lot of the stuff is really minor. I'll get to the major stuff. I think overall and how you should approach the game is eco first because that's the easiest to fix and I'll give an example for what Red did and how he just was way behind early on with eco um, but Blue has great eco he's dropping farms as soon as he has 60 wood his base is getting nice and safe kind of sucks they gave up the scouting stuff so if you lose your scout you're going to have to palisade scout to see if he's forwarding because that's a big deal it's going to change your strategy, drast strategy drastically um Dropping farms, efficiency, scouts. Uh, I guess I'll wait till he gets his scouts out. Then that gets to another important part of the game, I guess. Where you don't really have to do damage with the scouts. You can take it if it's there, but you mainly just want to scout what he's doing again. Uh, so being in the dark, I'd be kind of paranoid if the other guy was forwarding and then looking to drop a tower on that wood and gold. And then maybe he was on stone, so he's going to keep dropping more towers and it would kind of suck. Here he drops a blacksmith, which is really weird. It's too early. Um, usually people drop a range, but he needs to take his gold first and saturate that. Uh, he's going out with four scouts here. And you can. this is going to show why... Usually it's good to make a spear here to defend at home while you're away with the scouts. But Red only has two scouts out. And he gets a scout there, which is really big. 
and he's going to get a scout here. Now you can see red only has this amount of scouts, and blue lost the scout to the TC. And so you know that red had a bad dark age, and that's what kind of sucks is that now red's in the dark. He's, he's on the back foot. And then if you have map control like this, if he's scouted well, I'm just going to pause it. Uh, he would know he could drop a tower here, just send one or two bills even, and just drop a tower, uh, I don't know, maybe here. It would hit the gold and it would hit the wood and he would get ahead that way. And all of a sudden that opens up the door for other options for more aggression or to fall back on the advantage he got from it and uh, just look to eco up or whatever. So, it, I don't know if I said it in this take yet, but that's why it's so important to have a good clean dark age. Because you'll have the units that you should, so you can do the proper strategy to get map control here like Blue did. But then to do something tactical, like drop a tower forward. Um, like if he had... Okay, there's a lot going on because I wanted to talk about the wheelbarrow. If this guy had like a forward double wood, and then also forward gold that means that like you should really be trying to get map control with units uh and if you open up scouts maybe like y y if you scouted his base early on maybe you wanted to open up 21 pop scouts to even get the map control uh but anyways he got it usually you'll get it by having a better dark age than the other guy like he did and now all of a sudden you can do the strategic stuff like draw uh, like i said drop a tower up here or whatever where red, his hands are tied just by having a bad dark age. Like, he can't really pressure blue to do, like, win scouts and then put a tower here because he just lost it by not having as many scouts out. So already early on, that's a big advantage to give up because it's basically free in dark age. So you're always going to have to decide at, for what level you're at and how you play. Like, are you losing games because of your dark age? Or is your dark age good and you're losing because of tactical mistakes eventually i mean it's always both um because I, I feel around 2k is where their eco starts evening out where they always have really good dark ages and stuff uh 2k boobly i keep forgetting there's the hd stuff too um here though he gets wheelbarrow and one thing i've noticed from like jordan rex in particular is that when you have like two berry patches left he usually has two bills on berries for one patch left you can have like one or two bills it doesn't really matter, but you want to send at least two bills to gold here to have the gold to click up to castle. Because you're going to have the food, but you're short on gold. And you want to get as many archers to turn into expo as you can. And that's kind of what I shoot for is my goal when I get to this spot. Um, and to do that, you need gold, right? Now, to get the wheelbarrow, the ego stuff doesn't matter because you're usually around like 30 to 35 bills anyways. And it's usually optimal to get it around 35 bills, give or take. But if you're off here or there by whatever, it, it's like such a small difference, it doesn't matter. It's more for the walking speed when you get raided to not lose a bill. Um, What's well, a bigger deal to factor in, though? I've never seen anyone talk about it. I think all the better players know about it anyways. Um, is that the gold saturation ends up being a big deal because if you don't have the gold to click up or get enough archers, it it's, sucks. So it's something to factor in. Um, like one build I like to do is just try to get all your gold saturated so you get all the archers you want. And I click wheelbarrow at the last minute. So like instead of making the last bill and then clicking castle, I'll do everything first and then click wheelbarrow. And right after it's done, I'll click castle. It's a lot harder to line up and it's kind of risky, but uh, it's usually on more closed maps like this one. And I'd usually put a tower on my gold. So uh, it's more the idea of it, I guess. He did a good job here getting that. When he had his scouts around here, you just want it around his base more. Like you don't, have to be looking to do damage like he did it's you can take it if it's there because a lot of people like will try to wall an open map that's like way too open you'll just get a free bill here or there but you want to see what he's doing like it's all right to use these just to see what he's doing you don't have to think about it like oh i made x amount of scouts let's just say five and that's 80 food so now all of a sudden i have to do 400 food and damage like it doesn't work like that because you have a next step going expo and then you just have to think, does going expo 
uh, I'm going to expo. He's already going to be ahead with the expo, basically. That's that's he, if you do it right, it'll be enough just to end a game. Um, should I do the damage with the scouts now and try to force it? Would that be better? Or is it better just to keep them alive for when I have the expo and like use them both together or whatever? Like those are always the choices you have. Uh, you don't have to think about it as strict like resource uh, efficiency. So here you can see if this ever happens and if he made like gold units here, he would maybe be short to click up. And you can see now if he had the berry bills on gold earlier, he would be a little more comfortable with gold and not have to idle his ranges. Uh, I make skirmishes for my ranges if this happens, just so that they're working and it gets me the gold to work. Click up because that's usually the limiting factor. Um, he has the scouts on the edge of the map, and there's no reason to be over here. Uh, when you play better players, you really just want to track down their units and see what they're doing exactly because it can change. Like they can get fletching, you always want to click their upgrades. They can be doing double stable scouts. I know it's not going to work on this map, but the more open the map is, the more this stuff matters. Um, and it just matters anyway to get better, right, and to win games. Uh, but you want to be thinking tactically first. Like, this is how I used to play, where I'm like, I just always want to go for that 20-minute castle click after, after getting bloodlines and opening scouts. Uh, but you should be thinking about how do I do damage first, and then you can fall back on clicking up after that. The early clicks like going 19 minute 30 second to 19 minute 45 second click after getting bloodlines or even not getting bloodlines those are really hard because just from the pure fact of clicking up that early you don't have that many villagers it's way easier to click up when you can have like 14 bills on gold and like more than 10 on wood and all that stuff because you can afford everything when you hit castle age the earlier you hit castle age or do a techie option the more like you have to use that tech effectively and it's a very small window like say you clicked up 20 minutes or let's say 1930 versus like uh 21 minutes 30 seconds like it's a very small difference of two minutes but all of a sudden you have way more bills by just waiting two more minutes you can do cool stuff by trying to do damage with your units that you have out which i think is like a good way to get better instead of just like basically just patrolling around walls and stuff um because you have to think tactically on how do you do damage now to even it up if he went for that fast click because uh, you're going to click up later. It's usually pretty easy to do too, especially on an open map. Uh, what's the other thing though? The other thing is uh, you don't have that many units. So if you go for that really fast castle click after scouts, you usually only have like 14 expo, 12 to 14. They have to be lined up in his base when you get the tech too, because if they're not, then it was like all for nothing. Oh yeah, the other thing is I'm going to stop the replay around like 25, 27 minute mark, I think, this game, because it's everything in that time period. I like that he made that second lumber camp southeast really fast, like when he could fit it in there. I feel like I just always do better when I do that instead of waiting. I think waiting is maybe slightly better to worse depending on what you're doing or if you want to save the wood. It gets As you get better, it gets pretty easy to like plan out. But if in doubt, just throw it down there because I feel like it's it's only slightly bad at best, but waiting can be like really bad. I forgot what I said, but basically if you wait, it could be slightly good to really bad. But if you just always throw it down as soon as possible, it's either uh, slightly bad to really good and it's never like a really bad mistake. Okay, so... He's making archers. You see he doesn't have gold. He gets bloodline for some reason and scale barding. And he doesn't have that many units. Uh, probably not the best thing. Actually, like something subtle that I started noticing. It took me forever to figure this out. Like I wouldn't get those two texts. But what I would want to do is even if I had the resources to click castle. Is just make more units and just like wait a little bit. Just so I could get more bills anyway. It's kind of funny how like. It, it didn't depend on my resources, more on like the bills I wanted to make while clicking up because, what is it, 160 seconds is a long time to wait while you, if you only have like 39 bills or 36 or whatever it is. I think it's like 36 bills for an 18 minute click and like 39 for a 20 minute click or like 19, 30 second click or whatever. Um, and like 42 to 44 bills just feels 
a lot nicer. It's a small difference, but it, it, it's amazing how how much nicer that feels. Okay, so finally he's scouting him, and that's like the other big mistake. You can see now, if he would have scouted this earlier, you see he has his wood next to his gold. He walled in a weird spot because it's too close. Like, archers with fletching can hit that. Um, so you want to be... Like, he has all these units. Instead of defending at home where he's already really safe, like, they could be out trying to do damage to this guy's base. It's just more of that. Like, it, it, it's the mental exercise of trying to do damage where he can do damage, like, easily there than rather than sitting on the advantage because when you play better players they're just better at doing it like that's the best way to get better i feel like i don't do it now like i'm trying to change it it's really hard it's all right to do it this way but if you can do that other thing and then when the situation calls for it just sit back like this it's just way stronger because now all of a sudden you realize that he has all those holes and like when they turn into expo uh you're just better tactically. You'll do more damage with the stuff you have and stuff like that. But yeah, a surprise. Like, because they're both playing Green Arabia and the other guy's doing pretty much what Blue's doing and he just has his archers like patrolling around his base. Um. So yeah, Blue had a good eco. He had really good advantage with the scouts. That's why the those subtle things as far as like who gets the scout advantage in feudal it, it's like you can feel how big it is once you you realize all the stuff you can do once you get those advantages but if you don't realize it you're not going to make use of it and so you kind of let the other guy off the hook it also makes you more comfortable as the game progresses like you can be like oh i got an advantage now with the scouts i can just maybe it's better just to sit back on it now because he doesn't have any damage i can do and it wouldn't be worthwhile uh, to try to do damage in his base, or maybe it is. Um, always surprised when you watch better players, like obviously Viper, um, just be able to do damage when I would think there's no damage to do. Uh, one example in particular is like a Spanish game where he went archers and feudal anyway. He just went scout archer, <laughs> and like just saw it coming and still died to it, kind of. So right now, all the, when they turn into expo, they should be in his base, and you'll, you'll notice that from like 2k plus games they'll just line this up better it's not to defend it's to do damage because this is a, a very important part of the game especially if you're better at eco and stuff like this guy is like he's way better than everyone at his level if you just line up everything for the expo and try to do as much damage as possible and ignore your eco for that moment um the more damage you can do the more you can ignore your eco and expo are just sweet A lot of people try to throw up like two extra TC instead of going ballistics there. I think it's better, uh, you know, just in general, I'm generalizing mindset to have just to go one TC, University, Ballistics, Thumb Ring, Cav Archer, and then Manganel, Siege Workshop to end it. And the Vils and stuff. Okay, so it's a nice... You have two nice things going on. Like one is that you have military and you're just trying to kill the guy. So it makes you start thinking tactically about stuff two is it's really strong you should be able to kill anyone easily below uh 1700 boobly just having like a clean ev clean everything up till that point um and i don't i don't think i'm asking for too much it's, it's pretty easy to do because it's such a strong strategy uh and the other thing is it you have less going on with the eco so it's easier to balance and you start realizing how important it is to have everything working efficiently in castle because you just can't get to everything and it's way easier to do with one tc and it's way more fun like you get to kill stuff while working on keeping an efficient eco uh when you have three tc it's ri it's insanely hard because everything has to be so well balanced and that kind of goes down more the imperial game and so you have all these steps to do but you always mess a lot of them up and so it's nice just to have like less steps and a shorter path where you can just end the game, I guess, and just work on getting everything efficient and then you can go 3TC and do it. It's it, it's really good to do both though. And I think as many different strategies as you can to get used to it. I think I focused too much on just doing one thing over and over. Well, like I for sure did, but um, uh, it's kind of off topic. There's a game called Os and it's kind of like Guitar Hero. But a lot of the best players say to get better, just play as many different maps as possible and don't redo the same like map twice, like same song, basically the song map. 
um, which seems so counterintuitive, but basically you're not training your muscle memory in that game. You're just trying to like train your reactions and stuff. And I'm like, oh, you know what? That's a lot like this game because like StarCraft was more static where the bases and maps are always the same. But the more stuff is different, it makes sense. The more volatile something is, the more you just don't want to play the same strategy and map like twice in a row, basically. It's not as efficient as just doing different stuff all the time. Especially if you already have your eco like this. The more lower rated you are, the more you just want to try the same thing over and over just to like get as much stuff out as you can. But then once you get to that point, you kind of want to do other stuff. And as long as you know that your eco is inefficient and you know by how much, it, I think that's why a lot of people, including myself, like harp on just having a good dark age all the time. Because um, like I said, Red didn't have a good dark age and that just makes like if you just want to win it just is so much easier just to have the good dark age first because it's free to fix versus becoming like a tactical master first of all and it's going to hold you back like you could do all the tactical stuff right once you hit 2k it's just the dark age is going to hold you back because everyone has a good dark age uh what's the other thing oh and if you have a bad dark age it can lead you to doing tactical stuff that is wrong because you're always having to overcompensate for having a bad dark age um but that's pretty much it. You can see how he's doing bad stuff now, like just patrolling in front of his TC and stuff with this stuff and all this stuff should be trying to kill the guy. Because again, if you get ballistics and you go for an earlier castle click, kind of like he did, uh, you're going to have to do damage with it. That's your timing window to do damage with the ballistics and stuff like that. So basically for any map type, for any Civ, for this game, if you can think tactically first, like how do I get units out to do damage? It's really good. Like if you have a map like Border Dispute or um actually I don't know if that's the right map, but I'm thinking of the map with like the trees around the ring of trees around the edge. Basically any kind of crazy open map. Uh, uh and water maps too. You just want to be first the fetal to get the tech option out for towers or for war or for galleys, I guess in the case of a water map. Uh to get the military stuff out basically it's like a it's like an arms race uh, in this case it's just getting scouts out if you're both going scouts to have more scouts and stuff like that like it's that simple and then based on the map how the map's laid out uh that kind of dictates where you want to put the units and how you want to use them and what the next step is so even if you're doing the same thing like scouts and archers and the cav archer a really good player could do the same thing that you do in some of your games but they use their stuff differently based on the map type um and that subtle stuff is like harder to teach and learn and stuff but once you're aware of it i guess it's just watching games and then getting used to it um that's this video though i tried to stay away from the number stuff so much and just go more the tactical stuff as far as uh doing damage and stuff like that so I think, again, one of the most glaring examples is once you have map control, if that forward stuff, just drop a tower somewhere because that's really, really big. You can just wall around the tower with like stone and then head back home, take your advantage, plan out your next thing that you want to do. Maybe it's knights, maybe it's cab archer. Uh, you don't have to make a lot and then you can just maybe throw up a couple TCs behind it. But it's more fun to try to kill him, and you can definitely kill him with Cav Archer, Manganel, and Hunwar. <laughs> so, uh, that's the video. It's pretty, I don't know how I feel about it, but just for lack of me doing it over and over, hopefully I got away from the number stuff and focused on the tactical stuff. And uh, you're always balancing between making military and doing tactical stuff with if if it's better to not do that and do something eco wise but keep in mind for this game it's way too easy to idle a ton of eco even with like five archers with fletching or just like five expo even or three cav archer you, so it becomes like more of a military oriented game with tactics and forward castles are really good towers are really good and it's way more fun to play it that way Hopefully it helps. Thanks for watching. See ya.